Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, after putting in a good day's work at school, most teachers are content to spend a restful evening at home. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is so popular that she's often called upon to share in the neighborhood social life. And a gay round of activity it is. Take last Thursday evening, for example. The couple who live next door to Mrs. Davis and me invited me over to their house right after dinner. They just wouldn't take no for an answer. Friday morning at breakfast, I discussed the events of the past evening with my landlady. It was nice of the Fletchers to ask you over last night, Connie. Did you have a good time? It was the maddest social event of the season, Mrs. Davis. The Fletchers went to a party, and I sat with their seven-year-old boy until he got sleepy. <laughs> well, at least it gave you something to do, dear. And Tommy is a good little boy. Good, but dull. He's a kind of an in-between age, you know. What do you mean, in-between? He's too tall for nursery rhymes and too short to rumba. <laughs> Well, how did you entertain each other? We didn't. They have a television set. <laughs> oh, what did you see, Connie? Well, I can't say exactly, but when I finally put on my pajamas and went to bed, I felt naked without spurs. <laughs> <laughs> Those westerns. Of course, I must admit I get a big kick out of them myself. You, Mrs. Davis? Yes, indeed. When I was a schoolgirl, we lived in Texas, and I did a lot of riding. Really? From our house, I had to take two trolleys and a bus to get to school. <laughs> but tell me about Tommy. Did you have any trouble getting him to bed? Well, a little at the beginning, but fortunately I found a book by Dr. Gregory Enton, the famous child psychologist. I just applied his method, and Tommy was in bed five minutes later. What method does Dr. Enton recommend? Pulling the plug on the television set. <laughs> pretty relieved when his folks got home, though. Tommy didn't look too well last night. What was wrong? I don't know. His eyes were kind of red, and he seemed a little warm. Could be a cold coming on. Oh, he probably was run down. Colds are all a matter of resistance. That's why I like you to eat a good breakfast every morning. Now, here, eat this cereal. I crushed some fruit in with your popsies this morning. Oh, no wonder these popsies were so peaceful today. Usually they crackle, bark, and snap at me. <laughs> what kind of fruit did you put in? Two kinds. I just can't seem to remember what they were, though. Mrs. Davis, you are the most absent-minded person I've ever met. Oh, I don't know. There must be somebody worse than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course there is. I was just exaggerating. I wouldn't hurt your feelings for the world. You know that. Of course I do, Connie. Uh, hurt my feelings about what? <laughs> About anything as trivial as some fruit. Fruit? There are two kinds in my cereal this morning. Good. That's the best way to eat it. <laughs> <coughs> but you better hurry if you want to be ready when Walter Denton comes to drive you to school. Oh, Walter isn't picking me up this morning. He's got an errand to do for his father. But I've got time to catch the 8.15 bus. Uh, I don't know about that, Connie. What do you mean? My watch says five minutes of eight. Your watch is fibbing. It's 8.20 right now. What? Oh, then I'll be late. Mr. Conklin will kill me. I've got to run this minute. Thanks for breakfast, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Now, why should my feelings be hurt? Because she put fruit in her cereal. <laughs> Why are you coming to school so late? Well, I might ask you the same question Well, don't Besides, I've got a good excuse I can blame it all on the 815 bus well, What happened to it? It was on time <laughs> Oh, they'll do that every now and then But I'm afraid you won't be able to kid old Marblehead out of... I mean, Mr. Conklin's a bug on punctuality I hope he doesn't catch you Catch me? What about you? You're just as late as I am Over two minutes Yeah, I know, I had a flat well, let's get going, Miss Brooks. We might as well march to the guillotine together. Fine. We couldn't ask for a nicer day for a double header. <laughs> now, just be as quiet as possible after we get up the steps. Let 
Let's go in, Miss Brooks. Now, if we can just sneak past Mr. Conklin's office. Yep, yeah, here it is. Let's tippy-toe. Right. Gosh, I'm scared to death. Oh, relax, Walter. We're only a couple of minutes late. That could happen to anybody. You certainly are calm in our time of danger, Miss Brooks. Well, it's the only way to be, Walter. There's no sense in getting panicky. But what if Mr. Conklin comes out of his office? If Mr. Conklin comes out, I'll merely smile and say good morning, Mr. Conklin. Well. Good morning, Mr. Conklin! <laughs> What an enthusiastic greeting. <laughs> but may I remind you, Miss Brooks, that this school is in session, and what's more, it has been for some time. However, I'll deal with you first, Denton. You have exactly ten seconds to present your reason for this tardiness. Begin. Well, sir, it's like Time's this. up. <laughs> had a fair trial, I'll mete out your punishment. <laughs> you, sir, will report to the athletic field after school today, and you will bring with you a long plank and a penknife. What are they for? You're going to fill the high jump pit with shavings. <laughs> the hard way. But, but Mr. Conklin... Case dismissed. Now go to your class at once. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Bon voyage, Miss Brooks. And now, it's your turn. My penknife's all rusty, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Besides, I should be in my classroom. I've appointed my daughter Harriet as monitor of your class, so there's time for your punishment. Miss Brooks, by a rare coincidence, I've written, in longhand, a ten-page speech entitled, The Early Bird. You will type it up neatly in triplicate and have it on my desk by noon today. You want me to type ten pages in triplicate? I don't chew my cabbage twice. <laughs> Me either. If it's cooked enough, once is usually plenty. <laughs> Please. Pay attention, Miss Brooks. At 12.30 today, I am addressing the Goodfellows Monthly Luncheon, a group of which I have recently been elected Best Fellow. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Conklin. It isn't every fellow who can be elected Best Fellow of the Goodfellows. <laughs> So right. And today marks my 30th consecutive meeting without once being tardy or absent. This breaks the former attendance record of 29 consecutive luncheons and makes me the new champion. I'd give anything to see you crowned. I'd, just... <laughs> I'd like to be there when you read your speech. I'm afraid that's impossible. It's just for good fellows. But if you can keep a secret... <laughs> I will let you in on something. They are presenting me with a solid gold pocket watch today. How do you know, Mr. Conklin? It was suggested at the last meeting. And I'm happy to say my motion was almost unanimously carried. <laughs> now then, here are the pages I want to type for Miss Brooks. I've got to get back into my office. Yes, Mr. Conklin, I'll do the best I can. Remember, Miss Brooks, by noon sharp, those papers must be on my desk. And let this be a lesson to you. Good morning. It's a dandy. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Now, I just stepped out of the lab to get some things in the supply room. Did you just step out of your class? No, I haven't stepped in yet. <laughs> I was a little late today, and Mr. Conklin just caught me arriving. What did he say? Quite a bit. But boiled down to an hour, it adds up to my having to type a ten-page speech for him in triplicate. He's got to read it at his club meeting today. Well, that isn't fair. I don't approve of disciplinary measures that relieve him of work that's rightfully his. I agree that it's a great imposition, but there's nothing I can do about it. Well, it certainly is an imposition. My goodness, I've got some biology papers that have to be typed by tomorrow morning, and I'm a poor typist. I wouldn't think of asking anyone to do it for me. Huh? <laughs> it wouldn't be fair for me to expect another teacher to stay after school and work with me on my notes in the biology lab. Of course it would. In fact, it would be an imposition for you not to expect someone to help you. But you just said... Who are you going to believe, what I just said or me? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I know of a teacher who'd love to type those notes for you. But it would mean staying here quite late. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the office in my lab is terribly small... I hear you talking. <laughs> oh, we'd be jammed in there for hours, and the lighting is pretty bad, too. Yum, yum. <laughs> no, no, 
I couldn't ask anybody to put up with that, could I? Don't hesitate a minute. Uh, do you really mean it, Miss Brooks? Do you honestly think I should ask someone to help? Ask, ask! <laughs> I'll do it. I'll go ask Miss Enright to give me a hand. <laughs> Miss Enright can't possibly do any typing. She's, she's letting her fingernails grow. It's for a part in a dramatic club sketch. She's playing the role of Fu Manchu's mother. <laughs> well, say, I don't like to mention this, Miss Brooks, but while you were talking, I noticed that your face seems quite flushed. You got several red spots on your neck. Don't tell me I'm blushing in polka dots. <laughs> I, I don't want to alarm you, but I'd like to take you to the infirmary right now. Why, Mr. Boynton, this is the first date you've asked me for in weeks. Uh, no, I, I want the nurse to take a look at you. Have you been exposed to anything contagious lately? Just Mr. Conklin. That is, uh, <laughs> what do you think I've got, Mr. Boynton? Measles. Measles? Where could I possibly catch a childish disease like measles? I haven't been around any kids since last night. Last night? <coughs> Tommy. Who's Tommy. There's no time for details, but he's the author of Hop Along Brooks Hops to the Infirmary. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Reader's Digest reports the results of one of the most extensive experiments in dentifrice history. Yes, Reader's Digest reports the very same research which proves brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. And here are additional important facts. Over a two-year period, the Colgate way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating stopped tooth decay best better than any other home method of oral hygiene. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate's as directed. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. And you should know that Colgate Dental Cream, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research reported in July Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Well, I didn't relish the idea of standing around in the hall chatting about measles, so I let Mr. Boynton guide me toward the infirmary. He told me he had had measles before, so he wasn't afraid of catching them from me. Judging from his attitude in the past, he was safe even if he hadn't had them before. <laughs> He's never gotten close enough to me to catch a dangerous glance. Here we are, Miss Brooks. Uh, let's step into the waiting room. The nurse must be inside. Say, isn't that stretch snodgrass lying down on the couch in the corner? Well, yes, he seems to be reading. Really? I didn't know he could. Oh, he's not much of a student at that, but he's a fine athlete. Come on, let's see what's wrong. Hi, Stretch, old boy. What are you doing on that couch? I'm lying on it. <laughs> I like an answer like that. It has integrity. Where's the nurse, Stretch? Well, she's in the back room with an emergency case. An emergency case? What's the trouble? Well, we were having a little early practice today, and there was an accident. The nurse is trying to patch things up temporarily, but it don't look so good. So far, she's had to take 12 stitches. Oh, that's terrible. Who's injured, Stretch? Our football. <laughs> it's all busted up. But the nurse says she can straighten it out pretty good. She's had some experience in plastic surgery. Great science, plastic surgery. <laughs> well, I'm going to get up now. Nurse Fenton ought to be about done with the ball. Oh, don't get too close to Miss Brooks, Stretch. There's a chance she has the measles. Oh, that's all right. I can't catch him. I had the measles when I was just a punk. Stretch, I had the measles when I was just a punk. Well, how could you get them again? <laughs> you know, I could do without today very nicely. Here you are, Stretch. The patient recovered beautifully. Hey, swell. Thanks a lot, Nurse Fenton. Well, I gotta be going now. You better take a look at Miss Brooks. Hope you get better real quick, Miss Brooks. Thanks, Stretch. Hello, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton. What seems to be the matter? Oh, I don't think it's anything, really, but I Wait just... Wait a minute, Miss Brooks. 
Look at that face. What's wrong with it? <laughs> Those little blotches. It looks like measles to me, nurse. You may be right, Mr. Boynton. You're a little warm, too, aren't you, Miss Brooks? Just a little. Well, that could come from any number of things, like being in such close proximity to Mr. Boynton here. But we'd better take your temperature. <laughs> just to make sure. Now, put this thermometer under your tongue. There. How's that? That's fine. <laughs> Good. Now, just sit there and be still for a minute. Okay. <laughs> well, Mr. Boynton, we don't see much of you down here in the infirmary, do we? No, I, I'm a pretty healthy specimen, I guess. <laughs> I'll say you are. How do you keep yourself so fit? Oh, I don't know. Clean living, I suppose. And considerable exercise. I play badminton whenever I get the chance. Do you really? Now, isn't that funny? I just adore badminton. You do? I bought badminton pool. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Miss Brooks? I said I love badminton, too. Put that thermometer back in your mouth, please, Miss Brooks. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps we could play together some evening, Mr. Boynton. Well, perhaps we could. How would Thursday night be for you? Sounds all right. Well, above me. <laughs> What's that? I said Thursday's great for me, too. Miss Brooks, will you please keep that thermometer in your mouth? I'll try, I'll try. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mr. Boynton. Why don't you come over to my place for dinner Thursday evening? Oh, I'm sure I'd enjoy that very much. About what time? How 6.30? 6.35 for me. <laughs> Quiet, please. I'm sure we'll have a nice time, Mr. Boynton. I've been wanting you to meet my husband. Hot dog. <laughs> Watch that thermometer. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. At the word husband, it just flew out of my mouth. <laughs> Miss Brooks, we'd better not take a chance. If there is any contagion, the students mustn't be exposed to it. Now go right home and get into bed. Bed? I'll see that the board sends the doctor over. And meanwhile, be sure to keep your room nice and dark. It's very important with measles. I still don't see how I could catch anything like that. After all, I'm a semi-grown woman. Uh, <laughs> are you absolutely certain that you never had the measles when you were a child, Miss Brooks? Positive. We were very poor. <laughs> Here, Miss Brooks Let me slip another pillow behind you Thanks, Harriet It was nice of you and Walter to bring me home Oh, don't give it a thought, Miss Brooks <laughs> It beats staying in school And don't you worry about your condition, Miss Brooks There's nothing to it I had measles when I was a kid Thanks, Granny yeah. <laughs> I brought you a box of marshmallows It's just something to keep you company while you're in bed That's nice, Mrs. Davis We'll chat for hours <laughs> well, Before we go, Miss Brooks I want you to know that the whole class chipped in to buy you a little present Oh, they shouldn't have done it, Walter Wasn't that sweet, Mrs. Davis? What did they get me? The afternoon papers <laughs> <laughs> Just what I've always wanted <laughs> I'm afraid Miss Brooks won't be doing any reading for a while. I made sure of that by removing all the bulbs. Oh, but Mrs. Davis, I... know I... you, Connie, give you an inch and you'll read all day. Harriet, please pull that window shade down. All right, Mrs. Davis. Well, this is clubby. Gosh, it's so dark in here you can't see two feet in front of you. So what? Who wants to sit around looking at feet all day? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I'll have to ask you children to leave now. I want Miss Brooks to get some rest. Okay. We have to get back to school anyway. Hurry up and get well, Miss Brooks. Okay. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, kids, and thanks again for everything. <laughs> it certainly was thoughtful of them to bring you the newspapers, wasn't it, Connie? Yes, it was. Do you think I could just light a match and see what Terry and the pirates are doing? <laughs> Absolutely not, Connie. Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Goodbye, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, you really must excuse me, folks. I've got some things on the stove. Oh, certainly, dear. Sit down, Mr. Boynton. Oh, thank you. I'll close this door first. We don't want any light to get in, do we? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll just find a chair and... Oh. <laughs> Here's one. Say, this is comfortable. Where did you get this new sponge rubber chair? Sponge rubber? Mr. Boynton, get up. What's wrong? You're sitting on my marshmallows. <laughs> it's all right, there. There's 
no damage done. They're wrapped in cellophane. (laughs) (laughs) Just dropped by to see how you were feeling. I feel fine, Mr. Boynton. Oh, good. Then I can get right back to school. I feel terrible, Mr. Boynton. (laughs) Maybe you'd better take my pulse. How? I can't see your wrist. Wait, I'll send up a flare. (laughs) No, I'd better not stay too long, Miss Brooks. You know how Mr. Conklin feels about fraternization between faculty members, and if he found out that I left school in the middle of the day to come to see you... Oh, relax, Mr. Boynton. He won't find out in a million years. Are you there, Miss Brooks? (laughs) Time certainly flies. (laughs) It's Mr. Conklin. What should I do? Just sit perfectly still. He may not see you. Come in. Well, Miss Brooks? Close the door behind you, please, Mr. Conklin. I don't want that light shining in my eye. <laughs> you will. Now then, Miss Brooks, how do you expect me to make a speech without my notes? Oh, dear. I brought them home with me, but I didn't get a chance to type them up. You see, Then, I've for just... heaven's sake, give me back the papers I gave you. I've only five minutes to get to that luncheon. Well, let's see. I put them right on my nightstand. Here they are. Just reach out, Mr. Conklin. All right, all right. Confound it, I can't find your hand. Where's your hand, Miss Brooks? Try lower down on my arm. (laughs) Sorry, there. There, I've got them. Good day, Miss Brooks. What are you doing in bed in the middle of the day? the measles. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Brooks. If there's anything I can do to... Measles! (laughs) Great Scott! I've never had them before. I'd better get out of here. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Conklin. You can't leave now. Gad! It's affected her voice! (laughs) No, no, it's it's me, sir, Mr. Boynton. At the risk of incurring your displeasure, I must request that you don't leave the premises. Now, I'd better close this door. What's that? Well, you see, if you've never had the measles before, you might have contracted them just now. You mean Miss Brooks might have given me the measles? It's entirely possible, Mr. Conklin. She wouldn't dare. (laughs) Well, it isn't my fault, Mr. Conklin, but Mr. Boynton's right. After all, measles are contagious. You wouldn't want to start a panic in the streets. There's no reason for any panic. The good fellows are waiting for me with the gold pocket watch. I want that watch, and I mean to get it. Now, no one knows that I've been in this room except the three of us. (laughs) I'm glad he doesn't hold my mortgage. (laughs) Now, look, Mr. Conklin, just to get a little gold watch, you wouldn't want your fellow good fellows to get the measles from you. Boynton, no one has ever gotten anything from me. You can say that again. (laughs) No, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. In the interests of civic welfare, I can't allow you to leave this house and expose the community to measles. Old man, how would you like a brand new Bunsen burner for your biology laboratory? Careful, Mr. Boynton. He sounds like he's edging toward the door. Yes, sir. A nice new Bunsen burner. Eh? Sorry, Mr. Conklin. I advise you not to try to leave here until... Oh! Oh! He got away. I don't think he'll get very far. He ran into my closet. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, have a nice trip. Miss Brooks, it may interest you to know that you have just destroyed my last chance for setting an attendance record at the Goodfellows' luncheons. Once a month, for three long years, I have been eating that revolting cream chicken in a patty shell with just one thought in mind, a gold pocket watch. Well, don't feel too badly, Mr. Conklin. You can take another crack at the record in the coming three years. Oh, uh, Connie, your school nurse is here to see you. Come right in, Mrs. Fenton. Well, what's all this? Visitors? I am no visitor. I'm a prisoner of war. (laughs) Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. The doctor's out on a case, Miss Brooks, so he asked me to take another look at you. Would you lift that shade, please, Mr. Boynton? Oh, certainly. Why, Connie, your face is all cleared up. Why, yes. Yes, the spots are all gone. It couldn't possibly have been measles. Did you hear that, Mr. Conklin? We don't have measles after all. Now she tells me. (laughs) When it's ten minutes past my gold watch. Well, if it wasn't measles, what did I have? Probably just a little allergy rash. Are you allergic to any particular foods? Only strawberries. (gasps) Strawberries. That's what I put in with your popsies this morning, (laughs) Conklin. Then that was it. 
Just a little temporary strawberry rash. Did you hear that, Mr. Conklin? All we had was a little temporary strawberry rash. You're very generous. I'm, gl <laughs> I'm glad you came to the infirmary, though, Miss Brooks. An ounce of prevention, you know. Ounce of prevention? Why did you tell her she had measles, you Mrs. Fenton, you? <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, I'm sorry about your missing the luncheon and the gold Forget watch. about it. What's done is done. I ask just one favor of you all. Don't ever mention it again. I don't want anything to remind me of my loss. We understand, Osgood, and I'm sure we'll all cooperate. Now, how about staying here for lunch, folks? I have enough for everybody. Well, oh, right, that's a wonderful idea. idea. What are we having, right. Mrs. Davis? Cream chicken over patty shell. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all together, folks. For he's a jolly good fellow. For, for he's, he's a, a jolly, jolly good fellow. fellow. For he's, he's a jolly, jolly good fellow. fellow. We should live so long. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap... Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream Luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we all had lunch and were just finishing our coffee when Mrs. Fenton put down her cup and leaned toward Mr. Conklin. Pardon me, Mr. Conklin, but there seems to be several small blotches on your face and neck. Blotches? Blotch what kind of blotches? Big red ones, like I had. <laughs> Correction, Miss Brooks, like you have. They seem to have come back. Come back? Mrs. Davis, were there any strawberries in that cream chicken? Oh, this is absurd. I've never been allergic to anything in my life. Well, you're never too old to start, Osgood. It might have been those patty shells. I'll get it. This thing has me worried. Some of my friends have allergies, but nothing like this has ever happened to me. I don't know why I could Hello? possibly be... Yes, this is Miss Brooks. What? Oh, I see. Well, thanks for calling. Well, we don't have to worry about any allergies, Mr. Conklin. We don't? No, sir. The lady next door just called to tell me that the little boy I sat with last night is in bed with a bad case of measles. Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.